Today, a Campbellsville University student is behind bars charged with the murder of a classmate. Police say 18 year old Josiah Kilman was found unresponsive inside his dorm room Saturday morning, putting the whole school on lockdown while they searched for a suspect. The coroner's office confirmed today Kilman died of manual strangulation. Police arrested 21 year old Charles Escalera for his death. Both students teammates on the school's wrestling team. Our Alex Dieter spoke with those who knew Josiah, sharing the impact he made at the university. It's indescribably suffocating him. An unimaginable pain. We've had an incredible life lived in front of us. Losing someone you love. Our community is hurting over the loss of Josiah Kilman. Campbellsville University is left putting the pieces back together after freshman Josiah Kilman was found dead in his campus dorm room Saturday. Less than 24 hours later, police arrested 21-year-old Charles Escalera in connection to Josiah's death. Escalera and Josiah were teammates on the university's wrestling team, a team Campbellsville University President Dr. Joseph Hopkins says is now leaning on one another. Josiah's teammates are understandably devastated, uh, but they are strong. It is a powerful team. They are uh, just so strong in their bond with one another and their bond of faith. Star athlete, friend, a man of faith. Josiah had his whole life ahead of him. He was such an exceptional human being that shined a really bright light into uh, whoever, whoever he touched. O'Brien Bird, Josiah's coach for 11 years, left reeling from the life lost too soon. One of the, the hardest phone calls I've ever had to take was his best friend, Adam, called me yesterday morning and uh, couldn't understand what he was trying to tell me. When I finally could hear what he was saying, it was just unfathomable. Loved ones now left with more questions than answers. The hardest part is explaining to these young adults, you know, why? And leaning on each other to keep Josiah's legacy and love alive. If you have children, hug them tight. This is a reminder for all of us that uh, life is truly a gift. Alex Dieterer, WHAS 11, on your side. The university is providing counselors and resources for students and working to secure the campus to give them a sense of safety to everyone there. Josiah's family has a GoFundMe set up to help pay for the cost of burial expenses and transporting him back home to Montana. We do have a link to donate on our website, whas11.com. The Nelson County School Board just met an executive session during a special meeting this morning to discuss the performance of its superintendent, Wes Bradley. The meeting's agenda mentioned it could include Bradley's promotion, discipline, or other possible actions. The board's faced scrutiny in the last years after deciding to move forward with the mergers of Nelson County and Thomas Nelson High Schools. Rebecca Hutchins, a mother of a junior at Thomas Nelson, was in attendance today, saying it was poor and unfair timing of the school board to meet like this without considering the working parents and teachers who otherwise would have been here, fearing Bradley's job is on the line. What I'm here for today is to keep Wes Bradley as the superintendent. Um, he has the best vision in mind for what our community's children and educators need to um, become the best adults and contributors to our society. And we are still waiting to hear what came from today's closed door meeting. Our Ian Hardwit is there. He'll have the latest coming up today at 4 o'clock. Also today, Metro Councilman Anthony Piagentini will face a full trial by the Metro Council. Piagentini is charged with eight different ethics violations accused of using his public office to leverage a new job. That stemmed from a proposal Piagentini co-sponsored in 2022 that allocated American Rescue Plan funds to a nonprofit. While he abstained from the final vote, he did take a job with that agency the very next day. Piagentini said it was a mistake and a charging committee recommended he be removed from his position. The council court has to prove whether or not misconduct occurred.
Super Chef Darnell Ferguson is also expected in court today. Ferguson was indicted last week on several charges connected to a domestic violence incident. Police allege he attacked his estranged wife at her apartment on January 2nd, making her fear for her safety. He's charged with assault, burglary and strangulation. Ferguson pleaded not guilty. He is due in court today at 3 o'clock. We are learning new details after police shot a man at an Indiana nature reserve. Charlestown police say that they were called to a home around 430 Saturday afternoon for a welfare check on a man. About a half hour later, police found his car at the Nine Penny Branch Nature Preserve just outside of Charlestown. Police say they found the man on one of the trails with a handgun and arguing with family members. That's when police say Major Brian Gilbert shot him. He was taken to UofL Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Indiana State Police are now handling that investigation. We're going to conduct a very thorough investigation. We're not going to rush things. Um, and that, that information will be presented to the Clark County Prosecutor's Office. Um, one, we want to make sure that the officers did everything appropriate in their situation, um, review that side of things. Um, but also the individual that, that has been injured, um, you know, whether he's going to face any charges, that will be up to the Clark County Prosecutor. Major Gilbert has been placed on administrative leave. No one else was hurt in that incident. The downtown Louisville Thornton's closed over the weekend days earlier than expected. Reps for the gas station at the corner of First and Broadway did not give a reason for that closure. But LMPD's crime data over the last year showed police responded to 34 crimes in that location, including assault, theft and robbery. Demolition continues on the new Lou apartment complex that caught fire about a week ago today. Much of that structure is already gone, looking now more like a pile of wood and drywall. The fire marshal deemed that structure unsound with fear of it collapsing. Debris from apartments spilled onto a nearby sidewalk, which has been closed while crews clear the rubble. Louisville Fire still does not know exactly how the fire started and said determining it would be difficult. Investigators will rely on drone footage and information from when they first arrived at the scene. Well, today the University of Louisville announced it's begun construction of a $90 million four story engineering building. It'll serve as the hub for engineering research and student activities. The funding for that building is supported by $65 million in state funds and 3 million in private funds. The building will be just behind the JB Speed School of Engineering complex on Eastern Parkway. It'll include classrooms, a maker space, high tech lab facilities and room for events for student engagement. These investments are the exciting ways we move our Commonwealth forward for everybody's kids and grandkids and great grandkids. What we're doing here today is going to create intragenerational change that creates more opportunities for everyone that comes after us. The school currently has seven different programs ranging from chemical engineering to computer science. The building will open in the summer of 2025.